You're ready. Sure. I'm Brian Jones with International Paper. Um, have you had a chance to take a look at the? I have. I I, I photographed it and I published it, so okay. that everybody oh. has access to it. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, like I said, I'm from International Paper. Um, Carol. Um, my name is Carol Northern, and I'm with EarthCon Consultants. We're the consultant for International Paper on this facility, and. Um, as you probably know, there is a record permit at this facility. International Paper has the responsibility for maintaining the permit. And as part of that permit, we do semi-annual and annual sampling in, for two different sets of wells. And we're here for the public meeting because um, based on some different activities that the facility is part of the sampling, we are requesting a Class three permit modification. And the public meeting is one of the requirements of that Class three permit mod. So, and the permit mod is to cover two different items. We do, for the post-closure care of a couple of units, we do annual sampling. And along with that, once a year for one well, we do an Appendix 9 sampling, which is we analyze for things that we don't normally analyze just to see if there's anything else there. And this past year, there were a couple of constituents that were analyzed or that were detected that aren't usually there reanalyzed and confirmed that they were there and so we want to add them to our annual sampling event so that we analyze for them all the time and the that requires a class 3 permit model. and the other thing we want to do is we have a monitoring well monitoring well 20 that is inside um, a secondary containment structure that obviously it's a walled structure so when it rains it gets water in it and so the well has is in standing water and that's not something that. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. Right. <coughs> you are you wouldn't mind. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Please. Appreciate it. Just summarizing um, the reasons for the request for the Class Three permit mod. Uh, my name is Carol Northern. I'm with Earth Climate Consultants. Oh, nice to meet you. Hi. Everyone, my name is John Holy. Nice to meet everyone. Brian Jones. Good. All right. It is semi-annual, but annually we do the Appendix Nine. Okay. Right. So there are there are two different things that we're requesting in this Class Three permit modification because it's a class three permit mod we are required to have a public meeting and as I was saying um, one of the things that we're requesting is we do on for post closure care for a unit we do semi-annual sampling but as part of that annually we do an appendix nine sample which we analyze things that we don't normally analyze in our routine sampling like soil no this is groundwater it's okay. all groundwater monitoring okay. And during one of our, uh, our last sampling event, we had se several constituents that were detected that aren't normally detected. And so what we were those? Those were naphthalene, 2-methylphenol, and phenol. And when you detect something like that, you go out and you resample and analyze again to confirm that they're there. We did confirm they were there, so we want to add them to the list of constituents that we monitor semi-annually. And to do that, we have to have a permit on. You guys doing like microbiology reports, or is that what you guys do? I mean, does it monthly or bi-weekly, or how, how often is it, is, are you testing? For this particular area, we're testing the groundwater, and we, we collect the samples and we analyze twice a year, okay. in February and August. And if, and if you find that there are or like contaminants or anything and they shouldn't be there or maybe at a higher a higher uh level are, are there actions set in place for correctness and then after you correct that action you go back to yourself what we do is we we have a set list of constituents that have been detected in the past and we have groundwater protection standards that we compare our concentrations against if they are less than those standards then we just continue monitoring if they're greater than those standards, then there are some corrective actions in the permit 
that we follow. And right now we're just in the regular monitoring. Okay. But as part of that, because we're only monitoring certain constituents, there's a whole list of other constituents that are part of these particular analytical tests. Once a year, we analyze for the full list, just to see if there's anything that has shown up or that the concentrations are increasing or for whatever reason wasn't detected in the past and is detected now. And then if we confirm that detection, we add it to the list of things that we analyze semi-annually. Okay. And to be able to add it to the list, we have to modify our permit. Okay, and the last, the last um, samples that you, that you resulted, were they in a normal range? except for these three constituents okay. who weren't there before, they are not there now, so we're adding them to the list of things that we're going to analyze. Okay. Do, do we know how they got there? Are they chemicals in your process, in their process? Are uh, these chemicals here? I think naphthalene is the kind of thing that any chemical product that you have, I think you start from naphthalene. Naphthalene is like the benzene ring, I think that's what you call it, and that's where it starts from. So I think anywhere I think you it could be found, yes. So is that the breakdown from another type chemical after it's breaking down broken down? Is that like the basis of Naphthalene is like basic chemical for any any chemistry to start. I actually it's like a benzene ring. Benzene is like the, the most common chemical. But that's that is that a breakdown from a product that you guys have or manufacture, that is that possible that it came from a breakdown from any of your chemicals? It's, I do not know where it came from, so. Right, you say it was a basic, but y'all don't actually use it in this basic form. You may use it No, we don't form. use that particular chemical in our form. Okay, so for nothing, for anything at all? No, we do not use that till then. What was the other one? Phenol. Uh, phenol. Yeah, phenol, I think, phenol. phenol, I think we do have in our formulations, yes. Phenol we do use. Is okay, and when you use phenol, do you use it in combination to the other chemical that we talked about? Was it like do y'all use those in combination for any type of uh, manufacturing of any other chemicals? All these ba basic chemicals used for a high degree. Making the resin, yes. Right. That's that's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so if I understand correctly on the one thing that you're asking, which it seems unusual to me that if you want to add something you have to change your permit. Seems like only if you'd want to subtract something that you would change your permit. But in order to add testing on the uh, February round, because you already do it once a year in August, you have to get a permit change to say test for these three new things. Yes. Okay. And those we don't know why those three new things got into the ground water. We don't, like they could have come from, because they're in a well that you're monitoring, you're sort of stuck with being responsible for them. They could have come from you or they could have come from off of the railroad track or anywhere. They could come they, from anywhere, yeah. They don't necessarily have to be attributed to this facility for us to have to analyze for right, them. Right. As long you, as they're detected, we have to add them. Right, because you're responsible for these testing locations, you're responsible for, for anything that is detected. And for making it go away? I mean, my concern is really in making it go away. If it wasn't there before and it's there now, it's a problem. So how do we make it go away? Well, the concentrations that we have to compare against for these constituents are background, which is non-detect. Mm -hmm. So let's say if background is five parts per billion, if it shows up at 5.1 parts per billion, we have to add it to the list. So it's, it's not necessarily there at a concentration that is um, a health concern, but because we have to look at anything that's above background, we have to add it to the list. And that's a, is that a state regulatory standard or is it something within your, uh, your company that you say, hey, this is our policy that we must do? We have, the company has um, a RECRA permit, which is a federal permit administered by the state. Okay, so you, you follow the state guidelines? Like federal and state right. guidelines. Federal and state, okay. The second thing that we're asking for in this permit modification is we have a well monitoring well 20 that is located within a secondary containment unit. and 
because it's concrete wall, when it rains, um, there is water in that unit. And I believe it also gets some other... I think it's not accessible, that's what it was. Like every it's time it's it not rains, accessible because of the, because of the rain. Right. Um, and so that's not really a good location for a monitoring well. You don't really want it to have it in standing water. Um, and the state has also said they don't want it in standing water. So we've looked around for another location for that well to, to drill a separate well and then to replace that one. And because of the layout of the facility with overhead lines, overhead pipes, underground utilities, there's no place else to put another well. But there is already another existing well that is down gradient of this well, that, which means that in the direction of groundwater flow, this well is a down gradient well. There is another down gradient well that's further away that is suitable to take the place of this well. So what we're doing, and the, the state has agreed that we can substitute the other well to measure our down gradient uh, groundwater quality. So they have agreed that we can take out monitoring well 20 if you know, we go to a permit mod and a public notice. What's the distance between those two monitoring wells now? It is. I don't know the distance off the top of my head. It's 130 feet. 130. So when you say it's secondary containment, that means that you have containment and this is within that containment that you're monitoring the ground. The groundwater, is that what we're saying? Or the access to that the, the secondary containment is for a tank. I got the you. tank okay. is the primary containment. Is the primary containment, containment and this and is the... And the concrete okay. um, floored and walled structure is the secondary containment for that tank. But you're only having to sample it once or twice a year, correct? That well is sampled once a year. If there's no issues. Well, so when, uh, on once a year, every year, it's full of water? It can be. Can you change the date? I think, you know, the, the way the tank is set up is like, you know, it's, it's a very huge tank. And right around there is complete dike. Even in a plant, any, anything, uh, like in any water, like uh, when it rains, the plant ground is open also. So we do not let any of the water go anywhere but into that particular dike. And that water gets treated before it goes to the city treatment so that any of the plant water does not end up in storm water. So that dike is made so that like any water that, and every time it rains, there will be a lot of water coming even out of the plant roof and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we do not get any, of, any drop of the plant water goes into the city or like a storm water. Mm -hmm. so it, it goes into this particular dike, where, right in the middle is the tank. So what we do is like you know, once the, tank, the dike is full after the rain, we'll pump that water into the tank and then it'll go to the treatment facility. So couldn't you sample that well while the tank's empty? Uh, could it's you basically pump it like you know, for that? Since, since the plant, like you know, all, the, all the downstream water from the plant is going in there, Whenever the state or anybody or Earthcon comes into it, nobody wants to walk into that water. But you yeah. typically pump it down anyway. Well, the monitoring well has to be accessible all days of the year, not just the two days. So, like when the year state came in for like an mm -hmm. inspection, so they also said like you cannot have the well there. The well has to be away from that. Let's so say you had a and you can't today, and, and the state shows up this afternoon, and if it's not drained, it's not acceptable. So it has to be acceptable at all times. And that's where the issue. Okay, yeah. and so, um, how did the well get to be there where this tank is? I mean, how did the tank get to be on the top of the well? The tank's not on top of the well. The well is inside the secondary containment. So there's a concrete tank. thing in the other tank, and the well is inside of that concrete thing. Well, how did it get in there? That to do the I can only answer that question because. We moved in this facility about like two years ago. Right. I know so, some so, facilities. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So when when the previous owner was making chemicals on this plant, and they were were you the consultant helping them? No. 
So the previous company with their previous consultant were testing these wells and or not testing these wells um, because if it was in this containment unit, they weren't having, and it was full of water when it rained then. I don't think like, uh, they, they've been uh, sampling this well they mainly because it's not accessible and that's why uh, state and uh, EPA, when they came in, they said we need to move this thing because it has to be accessible all the time. And the well is sampled. It's, it's that they don't want it in the containment where it can be, have the water around it. It's not as, as if we can't wade through the water to sample the well, but that's not an ideal circumstance. Right. Well, the rainwater possibly dilutes the sampling that you do there anyway, possibly. No, no, no. No, it no, no. no because you're doing this, it out of a deep... It's like a sticking out I got you. in the middle of... So even if the water is... And, we, and there's a concrete there. bottom okay. in this containment. So is it like a closed circuit? Like, is this tank, is, is it essentially also a refill tank too? Like, you, you drain it and fill it, and you drain it and you fill it, and it's so like, like a closed circuit. When it so much, it may take like us quite a few days before we can pump it all back into the tank. Right. But so we do not let any water out. So it's like a closed circuit. Like, yeah. the water comes out, it goes through, I guess, the fatter, and it circumnavigates back into the tank, the excess water that you don't use. Because I know in like some areas, especially like when you're doing like water analysis and dynamics, a lot of them have like a, like even in dialysis, they have what they call like, you know, they have holding tanks too. But specifically for dialysis, they have like ultraviolet uh, lights that, that detect bacteria as it comes back to the refill tanks because you don't test it often. Like there, we test it monthly too. And we do microbiology reports as well. But, but continuously on a daily basis, when once that water uh, returns, before it returns back into that tank, they have uh, ultraviolet sensors that test that water before it's diluted from rain, from rainwater in your, in your case. See, so now they know, hey, this is what's contaminated. This is, uh, it was, the, the, uh, the measurements or the analysis was kind of off because when the water returned back, before it was diluted with like you say, the rainwater and everything, we know what was contaminated. So is that a practice that you guys do, or do you have to do it? Is it regulated by the EPA? Yeah, it is basically everything is part of the SPCC plan that we have, which is also approved by EPA. Okay. And state has approved that plan. Whatever we, we're doing there, it's not that like it, nothing is not approved. Everything is approved. Okay. This has been a process that has been, I think, carried out for, I don't know, so many years, number of years. Well, right. that, that plant was originally built like as a turpentine plant in the 30s right. or something, and yeah, then it's right. been repurposed a million different times to different stuff, and mm -hmm. at some point, this well got in the containment unit, and it's hard to get to Maybe every day of the year. Maybe the well was there, and then the containment was built because, like, you know, they needed, like, you know, the, all the, the storm water. Some place for water to go, right. All the storm um, water needs to go somewhere instead right. of going into the, anywhere else. Okay, and, and so if I understand correctly, the closest well that you have that EPA says you or EPD says you could use is a hundred and some feet away. And you can't drill a new one closer because because it's not accessible to a drill rig. Because of you can't get equipment there. You can't get the equipment there. It's not yeah. safe to do it. Um, and so piping. we overhead piping, utilities, the whole thing. I mean we have looked at all the different possible locations. Um, in different ways that we could install a well and we can't come up with one. And then you look at the groundwater flow and there is another well that's 130 feet away that serves the same purpose. And is it being sampled now or no? It is also being sampled. It is. So you're just going to stop sampling the one that's in the containment unit and continue and to sample. it out. Yeah, we're going to take it out. And take it out. Oh, take it out. Well, and it's important to note that the well that we're talking about closing uh, the concentrations are below the groundwater uh, protection standards. Yeah, and so, so it hasn't had any, that one hasn't had any violations other than that it's not accessible. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that is the violation right. that we are trying to address. So this is the violation? Access. Yeah, like not being accessible. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, like, is it a certain, um, what kind of pipe, pipe do you use for the water to flow from the tank? Is it like, is it like old piping? Is it metal? Is it... You when know, you close this well, how will that be done? Is it fiberglass? Like what is it? We'll go Tremie in pipe. and yeah, we'll tremie in um, a grout mixture to seal it up. 
And we'll finish the surface as concrete to match. To match the bottom of the containment. It's just my concern is, like I say, uh, we don't know where where the, the levels came from. We don't know why it was in violation. And that's what I'm saying. Well, is this well is not in, there's not, there is nothing in this well. This well is a down gradient well. Um, okay, so. The in here have not, ac yeah, being able to access it without wading through water is our violation. Okay, but when you just did the test and you just noticed it was some high levels and stuff. That was in a different oh, well. That was a different well. Oh, okay. It was a different well in different areas. Okay. There's two completely separate two issues. Completely different. Okay. okay. Okay, so um, maybe I didn't read completely enough in the documents that you um, sent about the the violation on this well is that it's not accessible and everything else is in compliance, if I understand correctly. Correct. Was that in compliance in the documents that are here in the library? Yes. There's, a, there's an attachment. There's a table. Is that table 2.3? That is table 1. Table 1. And that's in attachment 2. Attachment 1. Attachment 1. Okay, hang on. It's the fifth page in attachment 1. Okay, table 1, groundwater data. Okay, I got it. So basically, 1 is not in use. But the one that is in use is in violation. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I know we say we have two, so I'm trying to make sure. Okay, there are two separate issues. Okay. Okay. The constituents that we're wanting to add—that's a separate issue from okay. this monitoring well. Okay. This monitoring well, the only constituents that are analyzed and detected are barium, and their concentrations are well below the groundwater protection standard. Barium okay. is a naturally occurring constituent. Okay. So, there's nothing in monitoring well 20 that exceeds okay. the groundwater protection standard or for most of the constituents that was even detected. Um, and it is our down gradient well monitoring the plume and we want to switch to SMW3 as our down gradient well because groundwater flows this direction. So if monitoring well 20 is no longer there, groundwater is still flowing towards monitoring well 3. Okay, and it is completely accessible to us. It, there's no um, issue with where it's placed. This one, if you can see, it's inside a containment. Right. So it just essentially just make the job easier if you just had it in a different area. And then you could probably monitor a lot easier too. If it's from here and here, because the same is in the same uh, water flow path. It's in the same water flow path. And right now we monitor, we collect samples from both wells. But this one, the state comes in and they do an inspection and they look at it and it's like there's water in this containment area because it's the storm water from the facility flows in here so that they can pump it into the tank and then treat it and discharge it. And when there's water around that well, that's a violation of how you're supposed to have a monitoring well. A monitoring well is not supposed to have water around it like that. See, it's a violation of the Right, gotcha. So, okay, so, so the monitoring well is not in compliance. The monitoring well itself is not in compliance with the permit the because of the standing of water, the physical however, part. However, however, the samples have been the samples are have in been compliant. great. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that shows all the way back to 2003. Yes. That they've been in compliance 
Actually, all the way back to 2001. Yeah. January okay, I got it. One. January 9th, or 1. I got it. So that's that's issue number one. So we want to take so, it and roll out. So, um, this is maybe off topic. For how long does one have to monitor these wells? Forever? As long as it's in use. Pretty much. Pretty much. And so you started being in charge of these wells, and whenever you started being the the consultant to this company who moved in a couple of years ago. And before that, somebody else was monitoring these wells. So these are the numbers from that have been reported to EPD all these years by some whoever put them there, and now you've got them into your sort of basket of stuff that you're responsible for. That's correct. It's, okay. They go with the permit. Okay. I have a question. What other benefits will a Class Three permit have for your company other than allowing the monitoring of the new contaminants as well as relocating the well? That's it. So those are the only two things of why y'all want a Class Three permit. When you have a permit, anytime you make a change to it, it's a modification of the permit, and there are different classes. There's Class One, Class Two, and Class Three, and they have different requirements. And the different changes that you make require a different type of permit. So the changes you're requesting require a Class Three permit. Right, that's and permit. that's all laid out in the federal regulations. And the kind of permit you have now is also class a two. Class Three? No, no, no. You have you have the permit. You have a record permit, and then if you want to modify it, the different types to modify it, there are three different classes, and d depending on what you want to do, like when we want to add different analytes, that's a class three permit mod, which means we have to um, submit for public notice and have a public meeting. A class one just requires sending a letter to the state and they approve it. The class two is somewhere in between. So class three is pretty much a major permit change. It is. It's yes. the highest. It's considered a major permit change. All right. Well, and, and closing a well and using a different one is really a major change. That, that is a major change. Even though what you're saying is that there's this well has been clean and good for 15 years, still a big change to close it and say we're going to just only use the other one. Uh, I think part of the class three is doing more than one thing to the permit at once. Is that right? Doing multiple. That, that, so I think that comes into play part as well. Of it too. And I assume you have more than these two monitoring wells. Yes. Okay. There are there are nine wells. Nine uh, well, there are nine wells associated with monitoring well twenty. So we're going to take one out and we'll have eight. And then for the other area that we're monitoring, there are five or six wells associated with that. But we're, all those are going to stay. We're just adding constituents and. Even though they were detected in only one well, we will now analyze for them in all six of those wells. All those wells connected, like from one to the to the rest of them, like it's like all these eight wells are they all connected? No, they're standalone individual wells. They're not connected in any way. Other than that, they're in the dirt. Groundwater is flowing. Right, groundwater. Right, ground groundwater is flowing. Um, Okay, my question escaped me. Oh, I'm still concerned about how did uh, naphthalene get in there? Like, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. uh, unknown. So you're going to start monitoring for it, and if it keeps going up, so you noticed it now, and you say, hey, like, we should monitor for this, and if it keeps increasing, then what do you do? We'll go to corrective action monitoring as prescribed in the permit. But right now, the, the um, concentration limit for naphthalene is 231, and we had it at a concentration much lower than that. So I think it would, if there's no continued source, the chances of it going up don't exist, potentially, if there's a continued source then it wouldn't be from the facility necessarily. 
Right. Well, so uh, another one of my concerns. It's all laid out in the permit as to what we have to do if these concentrations are exceeded. Right. And, and I'm happy that people are sampling along the railroad. I mean, other towns have real contamination along the railroads, and we don't know how that contamination gets along the railroads. And so we want to not have that happen in our community. You know, so I'm, I'm happy that you monitor for something else that you see, oh, look, this bad thing is here. We need to check for it because we don't know how it's getting there. That That's a good thing. Yeah, that's what concerns me. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just looking at where, where it's coming from because, you know, I know in, in other areas that I've, that I've uh, been in, like, we have to find the source, you know, like, is in, like, you know, like dead legs, since it's like a, a, a hub for bacteria, you know, where is it coming from? Is it is it not flowing freely? Is it, you know, a certain, um, is it a certain like a uh, rate of movement of the water before it's you know it's just stagnant that it's just growing or whatever it's something seeping in from the water or something seeping from the earth is it coming from the water to the earth or from the earth to the water like we're just trying to figure out where it's coming from because I definitely don't want it to seep into the water supply for the city that's what my concern is so I really would think that <laughs> I mean it's y'all company but I'm just saying <laughs> I think it would be wise to find the source, if it, if that will be a part of the plan to find out where it's coming from, because I noticed you said that the next plan of action was uh, critical monitoring, and I mean that's, I mean we got to go to the the fact finding part. I mean kind of sooner than just critically monitoring it. Like right now, I think because it's, it shouldn't be there, that should be already you know kind of like critical because it never really happened before from what I'm hearing. It's like something new to you guys. Like it's never, you know, I never had this situation happen. So this, these chemicals only showed up in your previous sample. They showed up in the appendix nine sample. Okay. And you already tested it again. Well, we're adding it. If we've already added it to our sampling protocol, even though the permit hasn't been modified, we've already added it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to show up again. Like you say, because we're looking for it if it's above background we have to add it. So it could be fluctuating right around back. I mean, analytical results are not perfect. There's a percent error that could fluctuate. Correct, and this is a very low concentration. It's a very low concentration, so. So y'all, are y'all concerned that it was like a, a technical error? Like maybe it's how someone caught the sample? You know, it could be on that end too, so. Oh, but you said you sampled twice and you found it twice. Um, we confirmed. But oh, those, yeah, there was only the one well. Error. You said you only found it in one well, not in any of the other five. Mm -hmm. We only we only analyzed for it in that one well because every year you do an appendix nine sample and that sample rotates around okay. different wells. Okay. Um, so, so now, now we've added it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to make sure I understand. Now all the wells will have that added to it on the regular sample rather than we just did this one thing on the rotating scale. Right. So now we'll know when you do your next sample, we'll, if the permit is changed or you just say, well, we're doing it anyway because we want to know, um, you'll test all the wells. You'll know which ones it's in or not in all at once. All the wells for that one area. For that one area. For the corrective for action. The corrective action. Not all 15, but all no. the six. The, the, the six in the corrective action. Area. Okay. Did you already test those other ones? Like once you realized it was... Uh, Contaminants in one, and you say, hold, hold on, let's check the, the rest of them. No, you you then add it to the next sampling event. Oh, you have to go back and resample those. So there's potential for some of those contaminants to be in other wells. That potential does exist. But by ch modifying the permit and doing this testing, then you would know. You would know because exactly. all of them would get the okay. same test. So aside from reducing the sampling points by one, you're actually increasing what you're going to be sampling for. Yes. That's correct. Yes. And then this year in August, when we do the Appendix 9 sampling, we'll sample a different well. And if there are other constituents that are detected, we will resample to reanalyze to confirm. And if they are confirmed, we'll add those. 
Okay, so um, there's a certain list of stuff that you, I'm just trying to make sure I understand correctly. I'm sorry that I'm asking so many questions. Um, there's list A. These are the things we always sample for, and then once, once a year we take one well and we sample for, like, this big list. And if we right. find something on that big list, then we say, oh, we need to do that over again, and we do it again. Right. And then if we say, oh, that was... Then we add it to the smaller list of things that we regularly sample for. Yes. Okay. And then the next time we do the big list, we do it in yet another place, and we might find something else. Or not. We might find nothing that time. Then we say, okay, well, we just keep doing this list, and we do that list in all the wells. Okay. I I have the picture in my head. I think I have the picture. I could take, like, six years to do, though. Like, you know, if you... I mean, me personally, I would just think now, just correct me if I'm wrong. If, if these, I'm assuming that these tanks or these wells was put was placed there around the same time. So if I test one and I say, "Oh my gosh, we got some contaminants," well, let me check the, the rest of them. You know, let's let's look at the other five to see if they're contaminated as well. So I, I mean, I'm just saying, by the time you get to the last one, it's probably. <laughs> There's no telling. It's probably a new a new thing going on as far as chemicals. You know, something what, else could be created in what, that last what's one. What's the depth of the wells? They're fairly shallow. They're I don't think any of them were deeper than twenty feet. <coughs> I, don't, I don't either. Well, so it really, is it's so real, real surface. It's it's, it's re- water. Yeah. For the most part, or it's and the, the depth to the water in most of these wells is between one and five feet. Okay, so it's it's real surface water. It's very shallow. Yeah. So another one, uh, John said his concern is that it's getting might would get to people's drinking water. Well, that's a concern too. But my concern is that it's in the runoff, and that it's running to the creeks and it's getting to the river, and you know people are fishing and swimming and, uh, you know. We we have a surface water sample that we collect as an additional downgrading point to check for that exact same thing for discharge. Okay. So we're monitoring that. Yeah, because that you know that's my real concern. Uh, people spend time in the water; they yeah. are in contact with it. So I really want to make sure that the rivers stay clean. Yeah, because it's just a few things that I've noticed in this you know, in the city and the county. You know, a few things I've noticed. You know, with certain patients and stuff, and I'm just I'm very concerned about that. So. I mean, just whatever we're doing, we just have to make sure that we're monitored, especially when it comes, you know, if it's seeping in the, in the ground, in the soil, or anything. I just, I'm very concerned about that. So, you know, if this happening, and it, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to, to save some, a couple million dollars by using a couple thousand dollars to, to take, you know, effective measures, and you know, as far as safety is concerned, you know, that's what I'm worried about. To be, you know, to be honest with you. So say there are some future contaminants exposed, say, a year or so from now. There shouldn't have to be another permit modification. You should just be able to go ahead and add them to the list. No. You would have to do another permit. All right. So, all right. Well, that that keeps the public informed. At least they know what's going on. I don't have any more questions. I have the picture in my head. Yeah, I, I actually like to get a copy. Of it. Is, it, is it in the library? I I, I published it. Okay. You did. I did. Okay. You just, it. okay. Yeah. I don't have any more questions this time either. I deal with underground storage tanks, so I visualize some of what you're talking about. Okay. okay. Anybody else have any more questions? No, I'm good.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how often people come and ask questions, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know what's going on, but. <laughs> yeah. Super. Yeah. Uh.